Hello everyone, welcome to today's video where we will be playing round one of a five minute plus zero blitz tournament on chess.com in a Swiss format. So it's seven rounds in total, meaning there will be seven videos. In each video, I will play the game and then hopefully I should have some time to briefly analyze it. I would really think that we have a good chance of winning this tournament. I'm based on rating. I'm third already out of about 50 players so okay there we go round one begins and i mean i'm most likely going to play a caro or a slav although my opponent has decided to go d3 okay uh i'm actually just going to go for like a king's indian type setup i might even go for like a hippo just because i find these kinds of openings work quite well against lower rated players i've used this kind of thing over the board quite a lot oh, i guess he wants to do that so that his rook isn't hanging yeah okay okay cool he wants to trade the bishops i think i'll probably play e5 and say no because i think i probably want to castle there um okay let's go h5 i'm hoping for bishop e2 so that h4 traps the knight or sends it back to f1 i suppose but I mean, that's definitely a win. We could go f5 as well, which I'm going to do to put pressure on. If you take, then g2 is very, very weak. Although, although I suppose, yeah, bishop f3 exists, which is annoying. So I'm actually just going to push f4, which makes this pawn push basically impossible now. But I think I'll probably castle um, queenside. His knight is terrible, although it's going to come through h2 to g4, so it's going to become a bit of a better piece. I'm going to put my knight on f6 so I can take it once it lands there. Um, how do I want to do this? Let's go knight e to g8. These types of closed positions can be very difficult to navigate because it's not obvious like what you should be doing, really. I'm going to go knight f6. I can always drop this bishop back if I want to. I'm going to go queen d7, castle queenside. That seems very committal. I'm going to swing my knight in now. I think that was a mistake, f3. Because, well, I don't even have to go in yet. I mean, I could trade like this and use this open file to my advantage. Well, it's not open, but semi-open file to my advantage. But there's also no rush. This knight is terrible on f1. And it blocks in the rook. The bishop can't drop back if he wants to do that. does this. So I'm going to bring the knight in. And I mean, okay, he's coming to g4. But it's okay because my bishop controls the knight's movement. So what I might do is drop my bishop to c8 to trade it off. Maybe. We'll see. Okay, what's the plan? What's the plan? That's the question. I'm going to start at queen e6. I think the plan should be d5. My opponent goes c4, okay. So c6, d5, to me, looks like what I should be playing. Because my opponent's rook is basically stranded. His bishop can't really do a lot. And I think I have a good amount of pressure down the center of the board. It's slowly building. Let's bring my rook to e8 to get them on these open files. Okay, that's fine. I can take the bishop at any time. How do I increase the pressure? If I take, take, mm. maybe I double up on the D file. I do have to make sure that the E pawn is protected at all times. That seems very committal. Okay. Let's double up. Let's 
struggling to really find a way in here, but we do have a decent position. Okay. Interesting. Let's take. Take. Remember, there is no increment in this, so I'm going to have to be a bit careful about time. Be a bit careful. I'm going to go queen d6 again. I'm making sure that e5 is still defended. But I want to make it difficult for the queen to move because of the bishop. Yeah, I'm not sure what that does. I guess it controls d2. I could give a check. Do this. Let's go queen d4 to attack the rook. And I want to play bishop to f8. So my bishop can get involved. Okay. Now... One of the points of putting my queen on d6 initially was so that this queen couldn't move because of the bishop. Now we can take the bishop with mate. So, okay. To be fair, my opponent did actually play quite well in that game. Um, there are still a few games going on. So, I can have a quick look at the game. I'm just going to pull up a game review. I don't know whether you're going to be able to see the eval bar. Oh, no, yeah, I can switch. Okay, cool. So, I mean, it wasn't a perfect game. Those types of closed positions are quite difficult to navigate anyway. Maybe I should have played a more direct approach, but I think we kind of strangled him well. But then this F4 move, the computer absolutely hates. And I guess I got a little bit too concerned about this. Computer wanted to play H3 to try and destabilize the light squares, but I didn't like this kind of thing. Here, the computer likes this. And if bishop b7. gh1. Bishop h1. gf5. Bishop a8. Queen a8. And the computer thinks that I'm better. With equal material. I mean, tough to judge. But f4 basically gives my opponent the light squares. And I didn't need to do that. Because g4 was a big square for him that I just... There was no need for me to give it over, basically. But I think we handled it fairly well. f3 was a mistake from my opponent, which... I mean, similar to me making the f4 mistake, we both didn't quite realise the um, importance of the g4 square. And... Okay, knight f1's a mistake. Castles... I should have gone queen e7, apparently. Whatever. Knight g3, rook g1... Finally, the computer wants to go rook f1 and offer the rook. And to be honest, if my opponent had played rook f1 here, no way I'm taking that. No way I'm taking that. Because the rook is going to hang forever unless my opponent moves it again, which is just a... It's, it's a lot of time to spend on it, right? Um, and this knight is quite strong. The rook is doing nothing. So, king b8... Queen e6, c4, good move from my opponent. We again try and break through. Queen c2, which is apparently the only move. Wow, okay. Nice. I mean, fair enough. I guess you, you do have this um, pin on the pawn. So if you play something like queen b3, I don't really see why this wouldn't be fine. But apparently this isn't great. Maybe because there's a pin on the C pawn. But I don't really see this being played. Bishop A6 is playable. But like... Uh, I just don't really think that's much of a problem for black. Any, Sorry, for white. Anyway. Queen C2, Rook H8, Rook D1. A4 is a mistake. I should have gone Bishop to F8 there. Yeah, I basically... Um, I was a bit scared of losing the E5 pawn. Something like this. And to be honest, the computer seems to be kind of changing its mind now. So I feel like maybe I did handle it in the right way. B5. DE4, DE4, Rook D1, Bishop D1. 
Here I was quite happy with the move queen d6 because I'm just trying to freeze my opponent's position. Bishop c1, queen d4. And obviously my opponent blundered with queen f2, giving me mate in one. But my plan was, let's see, something like knight f2 to go bishop to f8 and bring the bishop to b4. So let's say something like bishop to d2 here. Computer likes bishop c5 going this way. The rook is, you know, very, very weak. Black, basically, white is just incredibly cramped in this position. And I'm not going to pretend like I had everything calculated out because I didn't. But I just thought that this would inevitably be winning. Move like bishop b4, win on the spot for black because either white loses the bishop or if you trade then the king is out of squares and you have to give up your queen and get mated. So, yeah, I think some mistakes playing on the king side earlier on by both of us. Oh, whoa, a new round just started. Oh, well, check out the next video. Uh, I've already lost a lot of time. I've got to get recording. <laughs>